The reports that federal bureaucrats send to Congress are, in general, pretty dry reads. The titles alone are enough to put somebody to sleep. For instance, there's the Annual Report on Grain Inspection, Packers and Stockyards Administration, or the Scientific Assessment of Freshwater Harmful Algal Blooms. Every year, thousands of these reports are prepared at a high cost to the taxpayer because they're supposed to make Congress smarter. And they would if Congress bothered to read them. The dirty little secret is that Congress lost control of this system years ago and let it become a giant black hole of money and time. If the American taxpayer knew that we were getting a dog and fur cat protection report, um, didn't even know there was this kind of initiative, you know, I think people would be pretty upset. That's right. This is an actual report which Congress has required by law. You see, back in the late 1990s, some unscrupulous companies overseas were skinning dogs and cats and pretending the fur came from other animals. The public was outraged, so Congress passed laws to prevent it from ever happening again. The Department of Homeland Security was required to produce this report every year on how many illegal furs it had seized at U.S. borders. But after a while, Congress seemed to lose interest in what the report said. There had never been any feedback that we could see from anywhere, so I, I kind of immediately questioned the usefulness of this report. Mullen left the agency years ago, but even today, none of the seven committees that get the dog and cat fur protection report say they've used it recently. So what does it take to produce this seven-page report that nobody seems to need? I'm sure it was 15 people within the headquarters who had to deal with that. And the whole process takes how long? Uh, from the time it starts drafting until it, it gets out the door, even with a simplistic report like that would be three months, I'm sure. The dog and cat fur report isn't the only problematic one. Over the decades, the number of these reports has climbed from a few hundred to more than 4,000, and it doesn't seem like anyone is keeping track of them. Technically, on the official list of reports that Congress is expecting, there is a report on Spanish-American war veterans, the last of whom died 22 years ago. Also, Congress is still officially expecting six different reports on the Soviet Union, which dissolved in 1991. But what about those reports that are still useful? They must be stored someplace where the public can find them, right? There is no single depository where all these reports reside. You know, why shouldn't you be able to go Google the website that says, you know, governmentreport.gov and find all these reports? Right now, Congress is considering a bill that would do just that. In addition, Senator Warner has sponsored a bill that would eliminate about 300 of the most useless reports. But don't get too excited just yet. When the House made a similar effort to cut back on the number of reports, some committees objected. They wanted to keep their little used reports going. So in the end, the House voted to cut less than 100. So today, while the two houses of Congress debate what to cut, bureaucrats will continue to compile these reports, and Congress will continue to lose track of them.